This is Twit. Okay, let's talk about uh, Godot. Oh, Godot. I can't pronounce it either. Jeff, take it away. <laughs> I will fix that. So, Godot is a free cross-platform uh-huh. open-source game engine, and it competes with other engines such as the Unreal Engine, just to name one. Main difference being Unreal is a commercial product, while Godot is not. Now, I'm saying Godot because that's how the official documentation says it should be pronounced for English speakers. I have included a link to a YouTube song which clears it up. It's not quite <laughs> as good as the Sousa song, but, but still, still good. You know, it's not too bad. But back to the main story, Godot is going to go full path tracing instead of a Lumen-like hybrid, and a Nanite system isn't planned either. So what does all that mean? The article is talking about how lighting is handled for games. The, the engines take a light source or multiple sources and figure out where the light shines and the light from reflections to try and make a more realistic scene. They're using Unreal as an example, as it's one of the top engines out there, and they try to explain why they're not going to be like Unreal. Now, the first is they're not trying to put features in which would not allow lower tier GPUs to work very well. They say that their core audience works on lower spec games, and they're not going after the AAA titles, you know, so they're not expecting the next, you know, Cyberpunk to come out on Gato. A lot of what Unreal does requires a higher level GPU because of the of the complexity of the engine. And that's why Unreal is called a cinematic renderer. Gato creator Juan Linteski said that it's not where they're trying to be. And part of the problem is the resources they have. Juan said in an X tweet, let's say everything is ready to do a cinematic renderer, referring to Unreal or one of, one of their competitors. The first thing to understand is that Godot is not epic, meaning epic games. The project does not have 150 veteran graphics engineers who can maintain an insanely huge renderer. First, first of all, it should be uh, ray path tracing only with a base raster pass. And this in save, saves incredi- incredible amounts of work as shadows, GIs, reflections, etc., would all be ray traced. Hybrids like Unreal or Unity, HDRP, are far too much complex and hardware is getting there anyway. So he's referring to a lot of this stuff that is in software is kind of shifting towards hardware. So he doesn't come out and directly say it, but in his tweets, he kind of is hinting that the problem might be solved anyway with uh, hardware eventually. Nanite is Epic's approach to virtualized geometry, and Juan also gave us gave complexity as a reason he didn't want to follow Unity's footsteps. Godot is lacking even some of the features which would allow virtualized geometry like shadow maps. What the complexity of game engines like Unity buy is more efficient rendering. For example, pretend you're playing a first-person shooter in a very beautiful museum with lots of objects and different lighting. Someone shoots at you and you duck behind a pillar. The game engine figures out what you can and can't see and only does ray tracing and path tracing on the items that are visible. This lets the game run faster, but the complexity of figuring out what you can and can't see is complex. For example, maybe there's a statue halfway from you to the wall. All the things behind the statue would be hidden and not rendered, but you need to create these virtual maps to make sure you're not leaving anything out. So it's simpler just to render everything, but then you're not you know, you're not spending the cycles tracing things which are, you are spending cycles which are tracing things which are not visible. On the other hand, you're not trying to be a realistic cinematic game. So you're not getting hung up on the reality a- aspect too much. So the, the GPU load overall is smaller because, again, you're not making these big AAA games. That's not really where the engine's at. Uh, Take a look at the article in the show notes. I think it was interesting to hear from a game engine creator why they were not chasing the top commercial engines. And if you want to try your hand at making a game, Godot might be a good first engine to start with, and maybe you can make a name for yourself in the gaming world. Being open source and free, you don't also have the commercial licensing where, yes, you can get some of those like Unreal or Unity and make your own game, but once you hit a certain level, then you owe them a lot of money or you need to pay up front to have a commercial uh, release. 
So, yeah, um, you know, Unity. I think it was Unity in particular this year, sort of poisoned their own well by trying to make a change to their licensing, and and sort of uh, the community lost its mind temporarily. Um, they were not okay with it. I, I I pulled up the 2023 show reel of Gado uh, things made with it, and it's interesting to see like the the variety of things that you can make in Gado uh, that people have done. Uh, lots of pixel art. The one that's playing right now is like a almost almost a Hot Wheels sort of game. Um, cool. I will throw this in the show notes because it's really interesting. Um, I know one of the big ones is uh, uh, Shotgun Roulette. And they they hit two million in sales oh. not too long ago. Huh? So, you know it it's much simpler graphic wise, but you know two million sales even of a lower tier game is still pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. It, it would be interesting to see what would happen to Godot and well, I suppose just Godot in particular if somebody made like a much bigger game or mm. they, they had an indie title that just really went nuts and went viral. Um, Cause suddenly you'd have a lot more interest in it. I suspect. Um, Maybe yeah. even get some it, more help with it. Possibly. Very possibly. And, you know, I, you I know, think, that that's the big thing when you think about when you compete against, you know, why can't, you know, and you could, you could trace that back to, you know, um, blender or gimp you know why why aren't they like photoshop or why aren't they like whatever and then you step back and look well they've got 150 people or more working on it mm -hmm. full time for years and that's their only focus nobody nobody has a second job or you know it's not a side mm -hmm. hobby it's this is what they do and it's interesting you mentioned blender because blender has really kind of crossed that threshold to where they are one of the industry standards now and Different corporations are pouring money and uh, and such into Blender. Um, it is a it's a pretty big deal in the commercial space too. So it, it kind of feels like we are just waiting for one of the open source engines to kind of hit, or maybe maybe that is Blender because from what I understand, you can do games in Blender itself. Um, but we're kind of waiting for one of the, the one of the game engines to really kick over that threshold and and really take off. Well, and that's really what it takes, right? If you have say say Unreal and Unity torque a major studio off, say, I don't know, I'll make <laughs> something up, Sony. Yeah. And they decide, okay, you know what? We're going to go God O. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need this and that, and we're going to just start dumping resources into it. And Yeah. Yeah, you can see it happening. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe on your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>